Yes, it is. And how great for you to share it with, with so many people in such a emotional and special way. Yeah, thank you. Wonderful. So each day that you wake up, art is a part of it. Yes. My studio is downstairs. Mm -hmm. I leave everything upstairs and I go down and either I'm, ta I'm teaching in my classroom down there or I'm working on a painting. One day, mm -hmm. go ahead, go ahead. Oh, one day a week I do the business, but that's not my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> the painting. The painting, the yes, art. yes. Wow, and expressing yourself in such a wonderful manner. Yeah, thank you. Do you have some favorite destinations to paint? Oh, yes. I, I did a whole series on Bali. I loved Bali, really loved Bali. Um, just about everywhere I go, though, I find the beauty there, and so that becomes uh, part of the part of everything that I do. Um, Bali, definitely. Um, Catalina, I loved Catalina. Italy. Um, there's been many places that I've gone to that I just um, I wish that I could stay there longer and. and wish that customs wasn't so hard on bringing your paints over on airplanes. <laughs> sure, I, I understand. Now from seeing, just from when we started talking with Bobby with this demonstration, how much she's added, I can see the shadows already. Is that more paint pigment that you're adding in um, to make those shadows just come alive here in your image? Yeah, I'm just adding, um, this is burn umber right now. I'm just getting the shadows. I'm trying to um, start really showing. I mean, I'm, when I think about this, I think about the difference between light and shadow. Mm -hmm. So I know that in the photograph, it will tend to um, warm up my shadows. And so I really want to go cool. I'll start out with a little bit of burn umber, which is on the side of warmer color. If I um, put reds into here, it'll remain too warm. So then eventually I'll start taking a little bit of green and work in the green because I'd rather make this look as though um, it does in life. And so adding the cooler tones into these areas will really help to make sure that that, that color just sets right down into the shadow and it, it reminds you of life versus what you see in a photo, definitely. Now, when you also come here in the gallery, you see the brightness of the colors. How do you capture that glow from a piece that you've seen right behind us? This, I'm glowing because of the beautiful oranges <laughs> and, and reds right behind me. It's stunning. How do you capture this glow through, through all your pieces? I do a lot of glazing. Glazing. Okay. Yes. Glazing is a method of um, using a lot of oil. And basically, the concept is um, that the white surface of the canvas will um, reflect the light that comes through the paint. And because I've, um, I've used the oils and I've used it in many layers over layer over layer over layer, um, the pigments are encased in this oil. And so um, it, the light goes in, it bounces off the surface, and then it refracts off of the pigments within. And it actually adds much more depth to it. Plus, if I'm doing those bright colors like you see in that one, I'm doing it against a white canvas. You know, I, when I first started painting, I started learning from the Renaissance painters. I had my nose in every book about the Renaissance mm -hmm. painters. That was my favorite. So all of my first paintings were really dark, you know, very moody, um, just dark because I did an underpainting. The whole surface was painted with a brown painting that was of all values. And then I did my glazes and my other layers over the surface. And that's when I started learning to glaze. But then since then, I found that I'm really a colorist. I love color. I'm just really passionate about color. A lot of times they're even brighter and I have to tone them down because it's so much color, you know? Yeah. And so I'll do it against a white, white canvas because the colors just become luminous with that showing through because oil paints are pretty much transparent. Okay. And the whole, most of the colors, especially what I started out with, are all transparent colors. Um, in fact, the colors that I teach my students with are there's nine colors, and I teach them that they can mix any color that is out there just about with those colors, you know, excluding some specialty dyes in clothing, um, you know. But other than that, I do, I can, we can mix anything out of red, yellow, and blue. And so I go with the whole theory of science and that. Um, but um, where was I going with that? Sorry. <laughs> oh, um, the brightness and. Yeah, the brightness. Yeah, so um, like in this piece right here, 
um, that I did at least six or seven coats of glazed over the surface of that one. Um, that's why the water is so luminous. Um, I added many coats of, I come in, I come in and I put um, like a red layer over and then I take a little green over that and then I take, you know, in just different areas in the water I may have taken the um, blue over the whole surface and then I came back in with the purple and did another glazing when it was dry. So it has to be on a dry surface and every time you come in you just use a whole bunch of oil, a little bit of paint and then you just, you know, flash colors over the surface of areas and it becomes luminous. And how long would a piece of this size take to dry? Does it take longer for oils to dry? Uh, the Galkid Light, actually, um, the liquid that I'm using, the liquid that I'm using is a, a fast dryer, okay. so it takes about a day. Okay. Yeah. That's doable. Yeah. <laughs> and how much art can you get done in a day if you had the full day, which oh. you do quite often? Okay, so <laughs> these two pieces up here, and I kind of I have fun on Facebook. Um, I have a lot of friends that, um, that, that, I'm going to straighten out just a little bit. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, what I did with these two pieces is I gave them shot by shot over a period of two days. Each one of them took two days, so I shouldn't admit that, that's way too fast. <laughs> And the horses or the dog as well? Well, that one too. Okay. Yeah, all three of those I did in a, it was, it was just kind of like, you know, me bored my studio painting, not bored, but you know, and without other people around, sure. Facebook tends to be the thing of my generation and yeah. all, all my old friends and everybody's on there so I can kind of show them um, what I've been working on. Sure. And um, each of those I showed them step by step. So I have the painting, the photographs of these, you know, as I started in the morning at, say, 10 o'clock, um, I started and I got so much done. And by the end, at, at um, 5 or 7, whatever time I quit that day, um, I would have the stage at the end of that day. And then I came back in the next day and it was finished by that day. So I just gave them like about six shots of each one of, sure. through the steps of it. So. Oh, but yeah, it's pretty fun. fast. <laughs> have you had a piece that you haven't wanted to let go? It's still in your home. You just you can't you can't give it away because it just means so much to it. You don't want to sell it. Do you have some I have of those? A couple. Of you have a couple. Okay. <laughs> to totally understand. One of them was a watercolor that I did that was a collage and and. Um, since then, I've decided I can let go of it now, but I had put this huge price on it so that even if it, somebody wanted to buy it, it would be worth it to me, but I loved it. And, um, there's another one of two little girls at the piano, mm -hmm. and that one is just, uh, I just really love the feeling of it. I've had a lot of people tell me that it looks like Renoir's work, and, um, which is a huge compliment. I, like, I so. love that. I mean, I felt so good to, to hear that. but. Um, that piece is one of my favorites. It's called Prodigies. Very yeah. special. And through you mentioned Facebook. Is that one avenue to connect with you for our our viewers to find you and possibly even take workshops from you and oh, yes. buy work from you? Yeah. Um, BaldwinFineArt.com. I have a page to like. Um, well, that's my website. And then I have Baldwin Fine Art. Okay. Um, uh, it may be Bobby Baldwin Fine Art. Um, you can find me on there. You can find me uh, on there pretty easily. Um, and then I have Etsy, and I have some sales on eBay, and then I have um, I have an, my own store on eBay, and um, Etsy and um, Pinterest, and you can also find me on LinkedIn. So I'm all over the place. We can find we can yeah. find Bobby Baldwin, which is wonderful. And you're also more than welcome to come here at the Fintana to find her. Yeah, this is the best work. place to find me. Yeah. And you know, Bobby is from out of town, so we are so pleased to have her here in Sonora. So you're inspired by our neck of the woods, but also your neck of the woods, which is fantastic. So we appreciate you driving all the way up here. I'm so glad to be here. I'd rather be here. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that means a lot. This is our home as well as your home now. Yeah. We truly feel that way. Now, through this this piece here, we'll go back to because it's just stunning. I can't wait to see the finished product. Who is this horse, and who is that cowboy? Is this from a from that photo? Do you know them directly, or is it just I a photo? I don't know them directly. I'd like to know them. <laughs> is, is it fun to get so wrapped up 
It I is. Uh, when I come home from these, you know, watching, I have, you know, 650 to 1,000 photographs because I can't stop watching I, uh, the motion of the horse, the, mm -hmm. the gait, the, um, the way that the horse and the rider become one. Right. You know, I go to polo matches as well as jumping events and cutting events and, and anywhere that I can find and dressage, you know, anywhere that I can find. And then I have friends who have horses that just let me go hang out with them. That's what this painting right here came from. Um, Stacy has, um, two horses and she's let me photograph them quite often. It's been a lot of fun. This piece right here came from, um, it's called Thanking the Workers and it came from an event I was asked to teach down in Texas and, um, and the young lady who's a painter who invited me, um, her and her parents were our ranchers. And so she said, would you like to go for a ride? And I went, oh, I'd love to. This was maybe 10 years ago, 15. Yeah. And, um, and so, I, um, so she gets me on a horse and she told me, this is the thing, it's so silly. I mean, she tells me to bring a hat. Being you know, from Sacramento area and you know, growing up in the suburbs, I really just bought a straw hat. I got out there, and of course, it blew off first thing. It was not the kind of hat she was talking to me, talking about from Texas. You know, I really just went right over my head. But um. <laughs> do you wear cowboy cowgirl hats? Do you wear them now just for the fun of it? I don't know whether I should answer. No, I <laughs> no, don't okay. have one. <laughs> I need to get one. <laughs> but what a special moment in memory through. Yeah. This process. Uh, it was a special memory. It was, <laughs> and then then the ride was three thousand goats. We were rounding them up, yeah. taking them from one pasture way over one place to another. And this was the hired hand, and um, so they did all the work. I got to ride behind them with it, with uh, my friend, and and um, and so um, I know that when I was in seventh and eighth grade, I actually took riding lessons, and so I had uh, jumping. You know, and I love jumping. So I remember walking my horse up to a rock and going, I wonder if he will. And he jumped over it, and I was like, that was the height of my glory forever. You know, it's just, I'm not so much a rider. I just absolutely love them, you know. And so. you capture it. So yeah, work. thank you. What did they think when they saw that finished product? Oh, they you? loved it, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. And, and yeah. It, it's fun to see not only just a horse and cowboy, but what else you're going to visualize. Oh yeah. You know, it's, yeah. It's, we, we can imagine but it's going to be really interesting. Now on a piece like this would you um, go back to your studio like you were saying you can finish the pieces pretty you know pretty fast. Pretty yeah. fast very quickly. Um, would you see this piece in the next two or three days? Or yeah. Can you work on a few at a time or will you be so engulfed by this piece? I will be so engulfed by it till I get it to a point where it's ready for glazing. And when I when I painted everything as much as I can, I've got the background. My, like I said, my first goal is to get rid of the white. Yeah. So as soon as I get that um, that cow in there, that's you know running in the opposite direction, trying to get away from her as she's turning the horse back. Um, when I when I get the cow in there, um, then I'm going to start doing the background getting in, you know, coming up with this imaginative landscape that I do and all the bright colors that I can throw in there and the sky. And, and then at that point, I'm going to take him as far as I can. Um, and then afterwards, I'll come back and I'll do probably at least three or four revisits and to put all the glazing and all mm -hmm. the other colors in there to really push the, the value so that the, it becomes um, three-dimensional, so that it feels like it's real. Can you take a moment and show us your brushes? Oh, your gosh. tools, your <laughs> and the paint um, choices that you have, the oil paints. The, okay. What you recommend? It'd be so, great for our viewers to see. I recommend definitely Winsor Newton if you want to. They there should pay me for this advertisement, right? <laughs> I love yes, Winsor Newton is is your friend. It's a great Yes, product. it is. I've tried a lot of different brands and um, I, yeah, I have one Rembrandt here and then I have um, a couple of different other ones. Um, now you don't want to buy um, anything that says Winton if you're really, you, I mean Winton is wonderful for starting out um, painters but the pigments don't last. Okay. 
because chemically they're not as pure because it's a student grade. But if you're really getting into starting to sell your work and you want to make sure that your paintings, I mean, I paint as though I was, I'm going to be in a museum someday. So I try to get the best pigments I can. And I've done my research about what the breakdown, you know, the, the pigments are. And there's um, a lot, that's a whole class. And um, so I've used Wins or Newton. Now, this is a Winton. You can get it in white. So Winton is fine um, because the titanium white runs the same through all the different, um, all the different uh, levels of, of art. Okay. Um, Winton is um, Winsor Newton's brand for students, but.